breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my co-host as always, Dr. Glenn Harrison. How's it going, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to be back. I'm, I'm excited yeah, to be a back. Minute. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where we got really busy in life and decided to take a little break mm-hmm. and back like we never left. That's right. <laughs> or so we think. We'll see how yeah. it goes. <laughs> so today, when we were brainstorming about potential topics and ideas, um, this actually came into my office last week. And when we were talking about it, we're like, my goodness, why have we not thought about this before? Because it affects just a huge amount of people. Uh, So today we're going to be talking about peripheral neuropathy. Um, If this is you or someone you love, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications uh, because we're going to continue to roll out content on a semi-regular basis about stuff like this. And you never know uh, when it might help you um, or when the information might be applicable to you or your loved ones. So let's talk neuropathy. Neuropathy. One. <laughs> Peripheral neuropathy. Everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Uh, some some of the statistics we looked up when we did this is it's like 2.4% of the population is affected by some form of peripheral neuropathy. And that uh, that occurrence increases to 8% as we age. That's the thing. So so it progresses. It progresses over yes. time. And until you know, until you see someone with peripheral neuropathy or you suffer with peripheral neuropathy, it might not seem like that big of a thing. But touch on if you could, without any names, you you gave me an example of somebody that uh, that had a couple minor injuries. If you could kind of walk through that, so people. Yeah. Could- um. I mean, I could give you countless <laughs> cases on this stuff. Um. I mean, all of us have friends, family, loved ones that are affected with this. It can really severely impact your life, even from quality of life where they don't want to do anything because their feet hurt really, really bad or their hands hurt or whatever. Um, It can get so severe that I actually have a really good friend who's uh, one of their family members suffered from peripheral neuropathy and got a really severe infection and actually ended up losing limbs because Mm -hmm. of it. So it's not like it's, it's not a big deal because it can progress into really, really it can progress into life-threatening things if you're not cautious um, because when you lose your ability to distinguish and feel your extremities and you injure them and you get an infection and that infection just rages until there's physical signs or, you know, whatever, then it, it can cause some severe complications. Yeah, it, it change, change people's lives permanently. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, turn them from being, you know, independent living to being handicapped. Yeah. Yep. So that's why it's important. And that's why we're bringing this up. So what are some of the causes that you see? You see more of this in, in your office. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a broad spectrum of causes, you know, you can everything from autoimmunity to diabetes, impingements, injuries, injuries can be anything from like a compressive injury to a traction injury. Uh, you know, a traction injury could be like you wrecked on your ATV or wrecked your motorcycle and you tractioned your neck. And, or you fall out of a tree and you're grabbing a limb and it tractions that lower brachial plexus. Um, so let, let's take a step back. back. What, by definition, what is peripheral neuropathy? For the so audience? peripheral neuropathy is going to be like when you have damage to the peripheral nerves and it causes some sort of loss. Usually it's sensory loss. There's different types of motor, like nerve fibers. Um, usually the fibers that are affected first are what are called C fibers. And those are your your lessly myelinated or unmyelinated nerve fibers. And those are responsible for like pain and temperature and crude touch. Um, so your ability to know, like if you set your hand on a hot stove, that's a C fiber um, because those really don't have a whole lot of insulation, so to speak around them. They are the first to become damaged yeah. in most okay. cases. So, um, so now- other things can be like metabolic factors, uh, chemotherapy, drugs, mm-hmm. you know, diet. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And, and symptoms, as you said, depending on, on what nerves being irritated, but burning can be, I, I get, I've seen that in clinic yep. where people are, you know, pain, pain, burning, tingling, uh, you know, lack of sensation. So numbness and numbness, you don't, you don't know how bad numbness can affect your life until you have it where yeah. you, I, I've seen it people in the fingers where they, they fumble like a mechanic friend of mine. 
he would fumble with bolts and stuff like that when because he he had a cervical impingement, so it wasn't you know pathogenic. And when when that would light up his neck, the nerve would get pitched in his you know in his probably his nerve root or farther down, and then he couldn't work with with any kind of bolts. It was terrible. It was terrible. And that that's just a minor thing. But if people start to get peripheral neuropathy or lack of numbness sensory in their in their feet, just walking is difficult. Yeah. I mean, you think about some of the risk factors associated with neuropathy, right? Especially if it's like peripheral neuropathy. So say from like diabetes, it's going to hit your feet first. Um, it's kind of hard to walk if you don't know where your feet are at, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, your feet are a long way from your heart. So vascular or like blood flow to that area, it's going to stay stagnant because gravity is pushing it down there, right? Um, it's harder to push it up against gravity. When you you have something like diabetes, it's going to damage the vasculature as well. So say you step on something like, I don't take your pick, a thumbtack, right? Or you get a sliver and that mm-hmm. thing gets infected and you have no idea because you can't feel it. Until it's, Until it's too late. Right, yeah. Until someone goes, hey, why is your foot black? You know? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, we're in trouble. So we, So if we can't feel our world, we could literally self-destruct but damage our our bodies to the point of return or you think about even so i live in minnesota you live in colorado can you imagine trying to navigate the spring when it's freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing everything's really slippery and you you don't know how much pressure to put on your feet because you can't feel them the fall risk you become or navigating yeah. stairs <laughs> or even or, even even a colder climate where you yes. know usually you can feel when your fingers start to hurt or get cold yeah you can't you freeze yeah freeze you freeze your fingers or hands or feet or whatever it is so um so those are some of the things um we talked about risks and you know path pathology diabetes is a big thing i see diabetes. yeah it's huge i would say out of the people that i I think I've probably seen out of in the past year, I've probably seen two people that suffer from peripheral neuropathy that isn't from diabetes. And of the two people, both of them have a mechanical onset. Like it's some stenotic changes in their low back that's causing it. But that again, that can cause a different type of peripheral neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Um, yeah. So the different, the different types of neuropathy, I know we, we, we talked about sensory kind of lack of, what are some of the others? Yeah, I mean, there's motor, sensory, there's autonomic. Um, you can get both because some nerves can, you know, have divisions for both sensory and motor divisions. Um, do, you, do you see do you, what you're doing with more in the neuro world? Do you see autonomic uh, nerve neuropathy? Do you, do you see that? I've never seen it, but yeah. I, I know it's when out we're there. digging into this. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I, I've, never, I've never seen it. I'm I'm super thankful for that, actually. Yeah. So mostly if people are listening to this. It's going to be motor or sensory neuropathy. Yeah. Meaning yeah. inability to reduce. You're going to have, yeah, inability to produce movement. When you think of peripheral, you don't get spastic changes, right? Right away. You're going to have difficulty moving it, right? right? Versus like if you have a stroke or something like that, um, which would be a, you know, it's not a peripheral, it's a central a uh, central lesion, then with peripheral, you're going to have a hard time moving it. And with something like a stroke, it's going to be spastic and you can't move it, but it's not because the motor won't contract. Mm-hmm. Um, sensory, you're going to, again, lose things like we talked about, pain, uh, temperature, crude touch. Those are usually the first things to go. Um, you can even lose things like joint mechanical receptor or joint position receptors. So you won't be able to tell if your fingers are flexed and extended, um, hot and cold, that kind of stuff is usually the first to go. Yeah. So, so how would people... You know, chances are most people know there's peripheral neuropathy, but, you know, imaging, I guess, depending on what's going on, uh, ruling out pathologies like diabetes. Well, here's, yeah, the, the way I look at it first, right, is if you have some po- some form of like neuropathic pain or neurogenic pain, um, you can tell a lot just off of a physical exam, right? Mm-hmm. If it's on one limb versus both limbs, you know, then you're thinking like, okay, is this an impingement somewhere? Was there injury to this, you know, this particular uh, nerve or is it by bilater- if it's bilateral, I'm thinking metabolic or, you know, central changes. So you can tell a lot just based on the physical exam, but then when you dive deeper into it, like a lot of this stuff is ridiculously affordable, right? So you do, you know, if it's on both sides, you're like, okay, 
I'm going to start and you look at their, you know, their physical appearance. You're like, man, there's a high likelihood this patient could be potentially diabetic. I'm going to run a panel, a blood panel to check, right? If they don't fit that particular, you know, what you, your diagnostic criteria as a physician or whatever, then you're going to go, okay, maybe I want an MRI to make sure it's not like a herniation. But again, you can usually correlate them to something else. It's not like they come in with just numbness. They're going to have other yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. So that's right. going to kind of lead where it is. So you can do things like blood tests. You can do muscle strength tests. You can do imaging. You can do, you know, a peripheral nerve exam. That's You can do a ton of stuff mm-hmm. and it's not overly difficult. That's right. Just get someone to do a proper exam and then follow up and, and not, not dismiss, right? Cause there's a lot of, there's a yes. lot of people working musculoskeletal world and, and they, they'll just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And they're not referring maybe to medical or functional where they're going to actually do tests and, and rule right. out each other. And even something like if you, and there's certainly, you know, situations where conservative care is absolutely appropriate and, and effective, but then there's times where you've tried and tried and tried and it doesn't work. And then you're like, okay, you know, I've had a case like this earlier this year. Where I was like, okay, it's time to get like, it's time to get a nerve conduction study mm-hmm. to see where this thing is pinched. Cause obviously what we're doing is not working yeah. and they actually ended up going in for surgery oh. and now there's no issues, but had we waited, you know, you can cause pump, you can, you know, have permanent damage if we wait too long too. So it's kind of like that fine balance about like, we need to do it now. Um, after the nerve conduction study, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not, the, I don't want to jump straight to surgery either. You know, the patient was pretty uh, had his hesitations about it, but he did it super happy. He did, he did it now and, and he's living a normal life. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there were other things we talked about. Well, well, that, that was kind of the musculoskeletal piece, Cairo PT, um, massage therapy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, but yeah, there's, there's other things too. I mean, there's, there's research that shows that like photobiomodulation and laser therapy can be effective and beneficial. We actually did a podcast on laser therapy previously. If you have questions about that, you can listen back to that hyperbaric oxygen you can use. Um, there's injections like PRP and stem cells, um, that have been shown. I, I'm not as familiar with that part of it, but I know that they have the capability to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, and then, I, yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing with somebody suffering and, you know, they're listening to this and think they have peripheral neuropathy or know they have peripheral neuropathy, keep digging to get to the source, just like everything else. Um, because it can be improved, I guess it can be improved. Yeah. Yep. For sure. I mean, and there's, yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff out there. Um, and then again, there's farm, you know, there's the pharmaceutical approach too. I guess we should cover that. You can <laughs> take things like, um, uh, you know, one of the big ones they use for uh, peripheral neuropathy is gabapentin. Um, yeah. Anything so, anti seizure or, yeah. or that's, yeah, those are kind of the two big ones. Yeah. Muscle relaxants and even in some cases. Yeah. Gabapentin is like it usually. Well, <laughs> it's the know. standard. It's on it, the menu. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's there. So, um, well, yeah. I mean, if, I hope you guys found this beneficial. Do you have anything else? Did we miss anything? No, I don't think so. I think that was pretty short and sweet. Uh, peripheral neuropathy. Um, looking at metabolic pieces and, and, you know, impingements, I think those are the big things. And yep. sure- obviously if you were in an accident and you tractioned it, like you're probably going to know that's what it's from. You know, mm-hmm. most people will come in and tell you like, oh, I fell out of a tree and I did this. Right. Or, some form of trauma yeah. or some hypertonicity of muscles, a spasm somewhere yep. in the neck, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it for, for peripheral neuropathy. Pretty for, straight and what, straightforward. What yeah. So, well, if you guys, again, if you got value out of this content, please hit like, and subscribe and follow along with us, turn on notifications. Um, we are going, we, we have explored the option about potentially starting like an online store, I guess, where you guys can get higher quality supplements. Um, if that's something you guys might be interested in, please let us know. Uh, just because we do a lot of recommendations with stuff like this, we want to make sure that you guys have access as the listeners to higher quality products versus going to like, you know, an over the counter store where you have no idea how long it's been on the shelf and you don't know, you know, if it's been reviewed or studied independently. Um, so if that's something you guys might be interested in, you can get a hold of us at info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com or leave us a message uh, down below in the, uh, in the comments and we'll check back on those. 
Yeah, because um, because we we've referenced different ingredients before, and and then what happens is, you know, people listen to the podcast and then they want to try these ingredients, and they got sixteen different ingredients, and they're trying to find a cocktail that'll work. So uh, we'll still do that when when it's applicable, but we'll just also give some recommendations of things that we use. Perfect. Well, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. I look <laughs> forward to back. the next one. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.